Hi, it's Maya here with my January and February reads and receipts. In these videos, I go through the books that I have read, my TB account, and how I'm doing with my challenges. I also show you any books that I have hauled, and there are timestamps in the description for the reviews. I didn't make a separate video for January because I only counted my TBR in February, so I'm going to go through two months now. And I also thought I'd say that I haven't felt like giving star ratings to books at all this year. So that's at least my mood for now. So there will be no star ratings in this video. Maybe I will change my mind later in the year and the reads and receipts will have star ratings. But for now, I don't feel like using them. My TB account at the start of the year was 63 books. And let's start with the reads. So I'm going to first go through my own books and I will have actually a separate vlog coming up for the first two books that I show you. So I'm just going to just quickly show them to you now so that I don't talk about them twice. I thought I would have already had the vlogs finished when I filmed this, but nope. In that vlog, I read The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. This is a children's classic book of interconnected short stories about the rat, mole, badger and Mr. Toad. Since I was already halfway through this at the start of the year, I didn't add this to my TB account in that February video which I'm now regretting because it would be so nice to get a book of my TBR, but my TBR stays at 63. And in that same vlog, I read Where Angels Fear to Tread by E.M. Forster. This is a classic novel about an English woman who marries a younger man in Italy and how her family reacts to that. And reading this brings my TBR count down to 62 books. And moving on to books that aren't in that vlog, I read What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher, which is a horror novella that is a retelling of The Fall of the House of Usher by Edgar Allan Poe. I did also read that short story before reading this. I couldn't remember if I had read it before. I knew I had seen a short animation of the story, but I couldn't remember if I had read it. I haven't actually read that much Poe. This retelling follows Alex, who is a non-binary soldier who arrives to the ancestral home of the Ushers after having received a worrying letter from Madeline Usher. Both of the Ushers are like their old friends. At the house they meet Roderick and Madeline who are both much changed and very sickly. And then there's also this other house guest, a doctor from America. And then there's also this British mycologist who walks the ground studying the local fungi. The mycologist was a very T. Kingfisher brand character. She was great and I really enjoyed this novella. I always enjoyed T. Kingfisher's writing style and the atmosphere was like suitably mysterious and spooky. Two ushers really work as these like tragic characters and Madeline's nightly wanderings have this nice unsettling edge to them. And this brings my TBR count to 61 books. Then I bought and read this uh, fancy manga short story collection, Shula Run, The Girl from the Other Side, volume 12, Dear Side Stories by Nagabe. So before this, there is a finished manga series. It's like dark fairy tale manga about this like monster-like character and this little girl who live together. So basically a little family. I love the series, but I didn't care about the ending that much. And I didn't know about the existence of this short story collection before I was at a comic shop with Raya from the Bookfinch and they told me. So I picked it up and I'm glad that I did because this is the good stuff. This features exactly the things that I loved from the series, like these little domestic stories of the two, like doing laundry or drawing together and other like cozy moments like that. So since I bought this and read this, my TBR account stays at 61 books. I also read a couple of ebooks. I made this deal with myself that I could only buy an ebook after I finished reading the previous one that I bought. And the first ebook that I bought was The Tears of a Dragon by Inti Sarkanan, which is a new release. And this is a short story that takes place in the Dauntless Path series, which is a YA fantasy series I really enjoy. And this takes place before the novel The Theft of Sunlight. So it features these three sisters who one of them is the main character of The Theft of Sunlight. And these three sisters also feature in the short story The Bone Knife, which comes before this. And I think you should read that sto short story before reading this one, if you are interested in this. In most of the novels and the other short story, our main character is the middle sister, Ray, but in this one, our main character is the youngest sister, Bean. The story itself is about helping a dragon against dragon hunters, which I can get behind, and it was great to spend some more time with these three sisters. The story managed to feel a bit different, like the narrative, than the ones from Ray, because there is a younger main character now. All in all, I find these short stories focused on these sisters to feel lighter in tone than the novels themselves, which delve on more hard-hitting topics. Like I said, the bone knife, that short story, should be read first because I feel like it introduces the family better 
and there are some callbacks to that story both in this story and in the theft of sunlight then i was feeling like reading some fantasy romance so i picked up the magpie lord by kj charles i had picked this ebook up earlier last year i think when it was available for free so this is a series starter and it is this historical fantasy romance with some added horror elements and it had this nice like victorian gothic feel to it we follow lucien Baudre, who returns from shanghai to england after he inherits the estate because both his father and his elder brother have died in mysterious circumstances but he also inherits a family curse and that is why he needs the help of a magician and the magician that has to work with him is called Stephen Day who also has this big reason to actually hate Lucien Vaudrey's family. So this was a story with ghosts and curses and both good and evil magic users and it like fit my mood quite perfectly. The plot was maybe a bit messy at times but I really liked following the characters. After that I was still feeling like fancy romance so I decided to read 10,000 Stitches by Olivia Atwater which I picked up last year after reading Half a Soul. So this book is set in the same world as Half a Soul and it's also a historical fantasy romance but this one has different main characters. We follow housemaid Euphemia Reeves who is angry and fed up with the unfairness of her place of work and she wants to better her station by marrying a gentleman basically and she has the help of a fairy called Lord Blackthorn so there is a fairy bargain in this and like training to pass off as a lady with the help of magic. I had a good time with this but I didn't enjoy it as much as Half a Soul. I just like the characters in Half a Soul better and I found them a bit more memorable. I do own the third book in this series, I think the final book which is called Long Shadow, so I am excited to see how I fare with that. Then I could buy another ebook because I had finished The Tears of a Dragon which I bought earlier, so I picked up His Secret Illuminations by Scarlet Gale. This is a high fancy romance that I had heard some good things about and it's a romance between a monk and a warrior woman which I found to be a fun pairing. The main character Lucian is a young monk who brews magical potions and illuminates manuscripts and he was taken into the monastery as a child so he knows very little about the outside world. Then there is Shewolf who is this mercenary who is hired by the monastery to track down the shipment of stolen manuscripts and she needs Lucian's help because Lucian can mag magically track the books. So the Shewolf whose real name is Glory uh, buys Lucian's contract and whisks him to the outside world. I did really enjoy the premise of this type of couple that I rarely see in a Roma storyline in a fantasy book. Uh, Lucian is like super into Glory and how big and strong she is and Glory is like super impressed uh, with Lucian's magic. The only thing about this book is that it is too long. It is over 500 pages and it's only the first part of the story. This is the first book in a duology. I did feel like the first half especially could have done with some uh, tightening. Some moments felt very repetitive and some things were described in too much detail like going into a stable, um, saddling a horse, going back outside, closing the door and so forth. I am still going to read the second book to finish the story and see how this relationship develops. So I think those are all the books that I feel like talking about in this video. I did also read some library books. I read a lot of manga, like multiple Dorohedora volumes, and I also continued with reading One Piece. But I don't want to make this video too long, so we're gonna move on to the receipts. So first, did I make progress with my reading challenges? Did I finish a series for my Finish 5 series challenge? No. Then the buzzword reading challenge, I actually did make progress with this. So January's words were life and death and I read What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. And then February's theme was verbs and I didn't complete a book for this. So I actually have very few physical books with verbs in the title which surprises me. Um, and I'm trying to read physical books if possible for this challenge this year. So I had the choices of The City We Became by N.K. Jemisin, uh, She Who Became the Sun by Shelley Parker chan Escaping Exodus by Nikki Drayden, and Taken by the Flood by Agatha Christie. So I did read the previous Poro book called The Labors of Hercules from the library in uh, February, so I think I can get to Taken at the Flood in March. As to the books I've bought, uh, apart from The Girl from the Other Side and the ebooks that I already talked about, I've also bought um, Gate Sinister by Tansy Rayner Roberts, which is a gas lamp fantasy novella which I read. And then I picked up Time of the Twins because it was on sale. This by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman, the first book in the Dragonlance Legends. 
And this is a high fantasy novel that I had already read and reread last year, but I didn't own an ebook of it, so I picked it up because it was on sale. And next, I picked up A Case of Possession by K.J. Charles. This is the second book in the um, same series as Magpie Lord, so it's a historical fantasy romance novel. And I am reading this in March. And apparently, free ebooks are my exception to the rule of reading the previous book before picking up a new ebook, because I also did pick up the ebook for Can't Spell Treason Without Tea by Rebecca Thorne. So, this was an ebook, I think it's like a fantasy novel. And it was available for free because uh, the sequel came out or something like that. So for a couple of days it was available, available for free, so I grabbed it. And this is a fancy novel about two women, an ex-queen's guard and a powerful mage who both quit at the same time and open a bookshop that serves tea together. And yes, they're girlfriends. So I think those were all the books that I picked up. As to some stats, in January I read 10 books and that was 1914 pages. And in February I read 15 books and that was 3249 pages. And my current physical TBR number is 61 books and I'm so close to the 50s. So yeah, that was the return of the Reads and Receipts after a year's hiatus from the series. Um, have you read any of these books? Let me know in the comments or just leave an emoji, tell me that you were here. And that's all from me for now, and I'll see you in my next video.